So would you like to see what is perhaps my favourite moment from Buffy the Vampire Slayer of all time? I mean, you can't actually answer me, so I'm just assuming you want to see it, but here it is. And there's no one in the world who has the power to stop me now. I'd like to test that theory. What well on, Giles. Giles, you are badass, man. Put the bunny back in the box. So welcome back to episode by episode, a series of videos where I look back at every single episode of a TV show and give my brief thoughts on it. We're still on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. This is the second half of season six. I think I've decided what the next show is going to be after this, so stick around to the end of the video and I'll announce that. But once I've done these videos, once I've done season seven, I'll do a top ten best list, a top ten worst list, and then we'll move on to the next show. Uh, but for now, yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer season six, part two. Let's kick things off with Double Meat Palace. Bugger. So this is right around the point where I have serious issues with season six. Started with Smashed and it goes all the way up really to around normal again, entropy, sort of that sort of part. So it's a big spell of season six that I'm not a huge fan of. So this is probably going to be the shortest video so far because I don't have a huge amount to say about these episodes because they're the ones that I've watched the least. And Double Meat Palace, this isn't a great start to this video, is it? This episode has its moments. Like there are a few things I like about it. I enjoy Xander and Anya in this one and the whole, they're eating people that's fun uh buffy running around knocking the food out of everybody's hand is great fun as well and buffy and willow together as well i like them in this part in this episode but as a whole like buffy working in a fast food joint it, i mean it must piss fast food workers off that their job has been used in this way like i can't imagine it being something they're overly pleased with um, but just nothing about this really works like the story itself is just ridiculous it's very very silly the characters like the manager what's his name jerry or something so it's been a while is so unrealistic that i just can't buy him and the villain is an old lady with a penis for a head like it's, why why um an episode that i've only seen a couple of times and look i've watched buffy there's a rewatch multiple times now, but there are a few episodes around this point that I've only seen a couple of times. Uh, this is one of them, just an episode I never really got on with. One of the worst, I think, for Buffy. Yeah, not a fan of Double Meat Palace at all. I think, weirdly, there are a few people that really like it, so if you do, let me know why, because I'm genuinely curious. Um, no judgments. Um, yeah, but for me, not a good episode. Not a good one at all. Dead Things. The Buffy misery keeps on coming, doesn't it? I mean, she's been put through so much this season that it's almost getting to the point where it's just like, oh, really? Really something else? Now she's going to think she's murdered? She's killed someone? That's what we're going to do now? Like, this part of the season, like it all just got so dark and so dour. And this episode is another example of that. It's just really, really grim. Like There's no fun, really, to be had in this one at all. A Buffy and Spike's balcony sex is creepy. Like It's a bit weird. Not a big fan of that. Um, I mean, there's some good stuff to come from it. Sarah Michelle Gellar's acting is great. That's this Michelle Schwarzenberg, like the scene where Buffy thinks she's going to prison. Like, it's played really well. I can't fault the performances here. It's just the overall tone for season six. For all of these episodes in season six, just really, really wore me down. Yeah, again, not a bad episode, certainly. Dead Things has a lot going for it. I like what it does with Warren. I think we need to see how much of a dick Warren really is. So when things happen later in the season, like you kind of understand that he maybe he should die because he's doing some terrible things. Um, it's good they started that in early. It wasn't just the one action he does later on that makes you think he should die. He is clearly a bad person, so I like it on that front. And the fact that it shows a bit of division within the trio as well, like Andrew and particularly Jonathan are a bit like, really? You, you're going to do this? So that's nice. But yeah, I just by this point of the season, I was just like, can we have the fun back in Buffy the Vampire Slayer again? Because the show was so good at blending the serious with the fun. And season six for me just went way too far over to the other side. And this episode's a prime example of that. Older and far away. Um, so when I said Double Meat Palace is an episode that I've only watched once or twice. I think this one I've only watched in full once. Uh, probably twice actually. I must have at least seen it a second time. But I, this is such a boring episode. It really is. And I promise I'll start saying nice things about this show at some point. Watch my other videos. I genuinely do love this show. Um, but yeah, this one was so dull. It really was the worst of Buffy's birthday episodes by quite some way. And it just kind of highlighted the problems for season six for me. If this had been like season two or three, and you had all of these characters locked in one place, like they couldn't get out, they had to interact with each other and try to find a way to escape, it would have been gold. 
It would have been golden. There would have been so many fun interactions between them all. It would have been funny. It would have been serious. It would have blended all those elements really, really well. But this misses the mark so much. I mean, Clem's in it, which is great because Clem is awesome. So I'm pleased he's here. But even somebody like Spike being in the midst in this one doesn't really come to life in any way. And that sums up this episode quite a lot for me. And did anybody really care about Dawn stealing? Because like, I didn't, and I don't mind Dawn. But I didn't care that she was stealing things. So to have all that come out here... Ugh, too much melodrama, not enough fun. As you were. Um, so I've said before, I quite like Riley. I have no problems with Riley whatsoever. And I'm pleased that he came back for this one so we could see him... How he ended up, where he got to. I feel that's a character that needed closure. It wouldn't have felt right if we'd just seen him flying away on that helicopter and then heard nothing about him since wouldn't have been right to me we needed one more episode and just one more i don't think we needed any more after this but just to kind of say goodbye to that character because he did have some fans me included and i really like his involvement in this one i enjoy the fact that he's married now sam is a fun character i really liked her and it took me about three episodes of watching the latest season of the 100 um to realize who that was to realize it was sam from buffy yeah, it took me longer than I'd like, and I refuse to Google things when that comes up. I have to remember it on my own terms, otherwise it's cheating. Um, but yeah, got there in the end. But yeah, I liked her, and it was nice to not only have some closure on Riley, but to have some closure on the Buffy-Riley relationship as well. Um, it would have been easy to make Sam an antagonist, but it wasn't. She was a nice person. She was fun, and Buffy had to like her. So I appreciated that. There wasn't any attempt to force drama into that side of things. Spike, on the other hand, I didn't care for his role in this episode at all. Like, having him be the almost villain of the episode again felt forced in just to have some drama between Buffy, Riley, and Spike. That felt like the only reason it was there, because it kind of came out of nowhere. Spike's been doing a lot of other things this season. To have him kind of fall back into just the bland villain territory again that he was here didn't work for me. It didn't work for me at all. Uh, the confrontation between Riley and Spike was great fun. Um, I liked the ending with Buffy ending it with Spike. Like, that was a really well done scene. Like, it kind of made me feel for Spike in a way. Um, but yeah, didn't really work for me overly well. Uh, the episode, though, one of the better ones from this part of the season, but that's probably just because I'm a Riley fan. If you don't like Riley, probably not going to like as you were. Hell's Bells. Ugh. Um, Xander Harris is... I've always liked the character of Xander. Always have. I think it's probably because he was a teenage boy and I was a teenage boy when I was watching it, so I kind of related to him. I kind of latched on to him for those reasons. But my God... What a character assassination of Xander this episode is. I hate this episode. Absolutely hate it. And I don't think it's one of the worst episodes. I don't think it's like the worst written episode. But no other episode of this show has pissed me off to the point that Hell's Bells did. Because there's been little hints here and there that Xander might be having doubts. But it's not been given anywhere near enough attention to make it to the point that he breaks up with her at the altar. But really... Xander would not do that. He wouldn't do that to Anya. There's no way at all he would, and especially because some old guy said that he's him from the future. But if time travel had been a part of this show, which I don't think it has in any way whatsoever, but if time travel was a thing, then I could buy it more. But are you really telling me that Xander is going to break up with somebody that he clearly loved before the start of season six, and even during season six? He's going to break up with her because some old guy says that it's a future version of him and gives him weird visions of what their future will be like. No, he wouldn't do that because Xander isn't that much of an idiot. But here he's an absolute dick. And that's coming from a Xander fan. That's coming from somebody who loves the character. I just hated what they did to him. I hated what they made him do, how they made him treat Anya, because she didn't deserve that at all. Ugh, this episode makes me angry. I say way more than any other episode of Buffy's ever done. I cannot stand it. Um, it's not to say there's not a few good things about it. Like Buffy and Willow having to deal with those bridesmaid dresses. That's fun. Um, I like the fact that Anya became the vengeance demon again. That was a nice twist for the character. But it was just poor writing. I didn't see any reason for Xander and Anya to break up. I really didn't. If you think about it, it wouldn't have changed that much going forward if they were still a couple. Like, it really wouldn't have altered much of Season 7 at all. Like, we wouldn't have got the Anya episode, like, selfless. So there would have been a few changes. But overall, if they'd have stayed a married couple, if they'd have stayed together, it would have been absolutely fine. This was a breakup for the sake of drama. It was just another excuse to pile misery on these characters. And that's all that Season 6 has been doing. Getting quite angry. Gonna try and stop and move on to the next episode now. Which, thankfully, is one that I like. Uh, Normal again. Can't be the first episode show to do this sort of thing 
um, having somebody think that everything that we've seen on the show has been an illusion, been something in their head. But it was the first example of a show doing it that I saw. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Not just because we got to see Joyce and Hank again, but because it was just such a well-told story. And this was, I think, the writer's name, Diego Gutierrez, maybe? I think this was his only episode that he wrote for the show. And that's a shame, because this is a really solid one. The best episode for season six since probably Tabula Raza. Because it's done in such a clever way. Like, it genuinely makes the audience question whether Buffy the Vampire Slayer is actually real, or whether she is just a girl in a mental asylum having these delusions of grandeur, delusions that she's saving the world. Because when you think about it, the, the whole premise of this show is absurd. It is, and that's pointed out to Buffy in this episode. It's one of the things used to make her think that maybe I am nuts. You can't blame her for thinking it. Just describing some, any of the things that have happened to Buffy in regards to supernatural and vampires, like it sounds insane. And it does such a good job of showing Buffy gradually being worn down to the point where Buffy in the Slayer world, in the real world, is trying to kill her friends to kind of exercise them from her life. Just a really well done episode. The performances are great. Sarah Michelle Gellar is incredible in this episode. She does such a good job. Um, the only thing I'm not too keen on is the ending, although I kind of like it in a way. It's just kind of trying to leave that question out there of, is it real? Isn't it real? And I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's only a really small niggle. Uh, this is, say, a really, really good episode, one that I loved. Entropy. Um, the Xander character assassination continues. Like, I get why he'd be annoyed that Spike and Anya slept together. Like, I understand that. But to be so entitled and so arrogant and so full of rage about it, all acting like the victim when he's the tosser that did this in the first place, piss off, Xander. I'm so glad that we get to the end of the season and he does something really good to make me like him again because oh, he was a struggle. And a real struggle in these episodes. Like, Anya can do whatever she wants. Like, Anya and Spike, they're both hurting at the moment. If they want to have sex, they can have sex. It's nothing to do with you, Xander. You made sure of that. You did that yourself. And it just felt so contrived as well that the trio's cameras are hacked and everybody can watch it just as Spike and Anya are doing it. Just as they're bumping uglies. That's when everybody tunes in to the Magic Box camera. Like, really, Buffy's better than this. It's better than those cliched moments. And I say, it is very, very contrived. Um, the acting's good, at least. The performances from everybody involved in this are great. Uh, Nicholas Brendan, as much as I hate what Xander's doing, gives a very solid performance. Like, his reaction to finding out about Buffy and Spike, in particular, is really well done. Like, he delivers that moment, I think, absolutely perfectly. But, yeah, I just wish we could get out of this. I wish we could get back to the fun again. Uh, thankfully, the episode did give us Willow and Tara getting back together, which was a really nice moment. Um, I hope they stay together. I hope nothing bad happens in the next episode. Really do. Um, but yeah, nice for them. Like, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing them reunite again. I felt that the characters had earned it. It had been enough time of them apart that it felt like a good time to bring them together. But everything else in this episode, I say performance-wise, great. But the actual story itself, I can really do without. Seeing Red. Here we go. Um, okay, to start with, the opening credits, like including Tara in the opening credit sequence... What a dick move, Joss Whedon. What a wonderful dick move. Um, and it kind of reminiscent of what he wanted to do with Jesse at the start of season one. He wanted him in the opening credits, but the network wouldn't allow it. So he got to do that here with Tara. But yeah, how cruel. How cruel is that? Um, before we get to the main event, um, the episode itself, I kind of quite like. Um, I've got some problems. Uh, number one being Spike raping Buffy. Or trying to rape Buffy. Did we need to go there? Did we really need to go there with the misery on this one? In fact, let's just kind of look at everything that Buffy's been through on this season, just to kind of prove that point about how just misery dumping this season was, to her in particular. So since the middle of season five, her mum's died, um, her boyfriend's left, um, she's found out that her sister is a key, um, her sister's been taken, she's had a mental breakdown, she's then had to kill herself, she's been reanimated in her own coffin, she's been dealing with the fact that she's got no money to pay the bills and things and having to take horrible, horrible jobs, Giles, her father figure, has left, she's, ended, she's gone into a relationship with a vampire that she absolutely hates, she's been convinced that she's killed an innocent girl and is going to go to prison, then her abusive ex-boyfriend tries to rape her and she ends the episode getting shot. How fun is season six? So yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I know James Masters in particular, he wasn't a fan of having to do those scenes at all. He wasn't happy with it. The only way they could have got Spike to be liked again by the viewers is to give him a soul, is to change that character up massively. Otherwise it was irredeemable. And in fact, it is irredeemable. It's only because Spike with a soul is a different person to Spike without a soul that we can kind of get back on board with him again in season seven. But it was close. It was a tough one. James Masters must have been worried that this was it for the character and there was no way back for him. 
Uh, the trio are quite good fun in this one. The rocket pack joke, it's hilarious. Like, it gets me every single time. I enjoy the three of them here. And I enjoy the fact that we kind of took a bit of a diversion from where I thought we were going to go. As soon as Warren became super powered, it was going to be the big bad for the season. I remember thinking this at the time. Um, but, of course, it's not. Uh, Buffy's able to defeat him and he comes in with that gun. And here's my big problem with seeing Red. Uh, take a look at the clip of Tara getting shot. Think again. <laughs> How did she get shot? How did that happen? Warren just had a normal regular gun with normal regular bullets. He was running away and firing upwards. Tara was upstairs in the room. She wasn't by the window, which means the bullet had to fly up, turn, then go like that. That's not how bullets work. They go in a straight line. It's always bothered me. It's always really, really bugged me. I don't know how anybody who was making the show at the time didn't see that. That bullet should not have hit her. If you wanted Warren to kill Tara, have Tara like hear commotion, have a look out the window and get shot in the head. That's a way around it, but this bullet shouldn't have done what it did. It really annoys me. Does it annoy you as well? Is it just me? Uh, but that scene is, other than that, is a good one. Um, although Buffy getting shot was a bit like, come on. Um, but just Alison Hannigan's acting in that moment is phenomenal. It's so good. Just the shock and the blood splatting up against her. It's just so well done. Such a shock. And it really sets up the final three episodes of the season nicely. So I've got issues with seeing Red, but on the whole, it's a very, very strong episode, I think. Villains is much stronger. Um, again, I've just said how good Alison Hannigan is. She's amazing here. Absolutely amazing. The change in Willow is done so well because she doesn't just go instantly evil. Like, she's Dark Willow, yeah, she is borderline Evil Willow with all her black hair and a goth look. But she saves Buffy's life, so there's still a lot of good in her, but it gets chipped away at as the episode goes on. The more her friends try to stop her from getting a revenge on Warren, the eviler she becomes. And it's fascinating to watch. It's so fascinating to see Willow as the villain here, and to see everybody else's reaction to it. Because everybody in the cast does a really good job with dealing with Evil Willow, with showing how shocked they are at what she's doing. And the final few minutes of this one, this was darker than I thought Buffy would go, but this is the kind of dark I could get on board with, weirdly. It wasn't just like a slog, it was a shocking, like, wow moment. Like, Willow tortured somebody and murdered them. Willow, the girl from season one, the girl with the dorky dress, has murdered somebody by ripping their skin off. Like, this is where we got to, and it's such a well done sequence. It really is. Um, aside from the Willow stuff as well, there's some other nice moments here. I think Dawn finding Tara is heartbreaking. Michelle Trachtenberg in that scene is so good. Um, but yeah, mainly this is a Willow story. This is everybody dealing with the loss of Tara and then dealing with what's happening with Willow. And yeah, top work by everybody here. I love Villains. Such a good episode. Two to go. Um, basically continues on from Villains and is just as good. Um, Jonathan and Andrew are great fun in this one. This is the episode I think I liked them the most in. And because they're scared. Um, they are genuinely terrified of Willow, and this becomes the point where Willow is a full-on villain. Like, she's full-on against everybody. Like, just watching her on this rampage is just awesome to watch. Like, the attack on the prison is great. Her killing Rack to get more power, brilliant moment. And that ending, the clip that I showed at the start, Giles turning up, just amazing. Um, my favourite Giles moment, I say my favourite moment from Buffy, I think, just his delivery of that line, I'd like to test that theory, is so good. And everything leading up to that is great as well. The fight between Buffy and Willow is really well done. Uh, I loved Anya's involvement here, just kind of hiding at the back, doing the spell to protect Jonathan and Andrew. Like, this is everybody not so much trying to save Jonathan and Andrew, they're more trying to save Willow. They're trying to save her from doing something even worse. Because this was her crossing a line. Warren? Yeah. He deserved to die. Like, he did. There's no two ways about it. He killed before and he killed Tara. We all love Tara. Jonathan and Andrew, though, like, for everything that they've done, they don't deserve to die. They really don't. And everybody knows that. But Willow is still trying to kill them anyway. And it's kind of an easy step from there to trying to destroy the world. Grave, the season six finale. So I am glad that season six ended on a high. I think the last few episodes of season six are really, really good. And the first few episodes I quite like as well. It's just that middle part. Uh, but yeah, Grave, I think, is a solid finale. Um, I've got some problems with it. I do have a few issues. Buffy and Dawn being trapped underground with those root monsters just feels like a very contrived way to get them away from Willow and to have them bond. Like, I get why they did it. I actually quite enjoyed a lot of that. I enjoyed Buffy and Dawn kind of 
finding an understanding with each other and Buffy realising that Dawn does is growing up. Like she does need to learn to defend herself. She's gonna help her. It's a really nice sisterly moment between the two of them and showing that she's reconnecting with her family again. Very important moment for Buffy, I think. But again, much like the past two episodes, these are Willow's episodes. This is Willow's story, and she's just as good in this episode, if not better. The fight between her and Giles, I loved. Um, both actors did incredible work on that one. Uh, but I think my favourite scene with Giles is actually just before he and Willow kind of go at it. Um, it's him and Buffy talking and catching up and Buffy saying that she slept with Spike and Giles' is laughing reaction to it. Just so well done and kind of showed why I've missed Giles. Like, I'm so glad he was in season seven for a lot more than he was six because he's really been missed. Like, his presence has been missed. It might be one of the reasons why I haven't enjoyed it so much. Because it can't be a coincidence that pretty much as soon as Giles leaves, season six, for me at least, took a massive nosedive. And it's only just before he came back that it went up again. Uh, the final kind of resolution to the Willow arc, uh, Xander and Willow on that hill, I love. Um, Nicholas Brennan and Alison Hannigan do so well with that. Uh, Alison Hannigan breaking down and Xander basically offering to die for her. Like, he stops fighting. He just tells her to kill him. And I just love the script. I think is brilliant for that one. The performances, as I say, were great. The line delivery is just done expertly that I'm fully invested in that scene as it's playing out. And hey, we also get Sarah McLaughlin back. Um, it's nice to see her music back in the show again for another finale. Now, it's not quite as good a song as Full of Grace, but this one does fit. And I think overall this was the best way to end the Evil Willow story. Um, there's only so many ways it could have wrapped up, and I think this was the best way to do it. Reaffirming her and Xander's friendship. Because those two have been close for years before the show even started. It really did have to be him and his silly little, little crayon talk to get through to her. It needed to be him over Buffy, I think. A last thing to talk about then is Spike, who obviously has been doing things for the last couple of episodes, but I just haven't mentioned it. Um, he left at the end of Seeing Red, but I just thought I'd save it for this one because he was only in the episodes briefly doing his little quest thing. But I did love the reveal of, I will return your soul. Um, the first time that aired, I was like, wow, okay, that's interesting. And as I say, I think they needed to do it. After how dark Spike got in season six, something needed to be done to change that character up. And this was the perfect way to do it. This seem a little easy. Maybe that's because we didn't get a huge amount of focus on what Spike was going through. There was a lot else going on. Spike's story almost felt like an afterthought to a degree. Um, but I like it. I think it was the best way to handle the character of Spike and a really good final closing moment for the season. Uh, so there are my thoughts on the sixth season of Buffy. I'd say I think this video might be the shortest one yet. I'm not sure. I'll find out in the edit, I guess. Um, but yeah, for, for me, season six had some good moments. I mean, the musical is incredible. Uh, I think the final few episodes are really, really strong, but there's a massive stretch across the middle where this show just didn't feel like Buffy the Vampire Slayer anymore. And if you do like season six, like, I'm not trying to attack something that you love, um, just to make clear. If you're into the whole darker side of the storytelling, then I can understand why you would love this season a lot. And I know that season six does have its fans. It does have people who really, really liked it. But for me, Buffy's at its best when it's combining the drama with the fun. When there's a bit of brevity to it as well. And season six was lacking that in so many ways. And I've said it a few times in this video, but it did just feel like a misery party. And that's not what I wanted from this show at all. Season seven kind of addressed that balance a little bit more, I think. But those are my thoughts. Over to you. Uh, what do you think of season six of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? What do you think of these episodes? Let me know some of your favourites. Rank them. Tell me what you think of them individually. Did you hate Xander as much as I did in this season? Because, uh, But yeah, I'd love to hear all your comments. So why I do these videos is to talk to people. So yeah. Chat to me in the comments, let me know what you think. Uh, do hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of them. Um, I said I'd do the reveal for what the show's going to be and I'm going to do after Buffy. And I think it's going to be Friends. Um, because Mel wants to do a rewatch of it and I kind of want to rewatch it as well even though I've seen it before. And it just feels like a very different show to Buffy. A different kind of show to talk about. So I'm going to watch a few of them and see what kind of thoughts I can formulate, see if I can do it. But yeah, I think Friends is going to be the next show. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Joe Julian. It's also my name on Stardust. If you want to be up to date on my TV reactions, I post on there quite a lot. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. Uh, look out for more reviews coming soon. There's plenty of movie reviews coming over the next few days, including Widows. Uh, very excited to see that. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.